Nasogastric tubes can be used to decompress the stomach to relieve pressure and prevent vomiting. It also provides a means of irrigating the stomach to provide access to gastric specimens for analysis and to provide a route for delivery of liquid enteral feedings. To complete this exercise, you will need to obtain a nasogastric tube, 1418 French, water-soluble lubricant, a 20 to 50 ml syringe with a catheter tip, a glass of water, a towel, an emesis basin, a stethoscope, a pair of clean gloves, a gastric card to check pH, tape, scissors if needed to cut the tape, and a safety pin. To insert the nasogastric tube, begin by washing your hands and elevate the head of the bed between 45 and 90 degrees. For the purpose of saving time, the bed is already elevated. Inspect the client's nose to select which nair has better airflow. You can use a flashlight to, to perform this. Ask the client about any deviated septums or previous injury or surgery. And check the ability to breathe through both nares by including one at a time. Coil the end of tube over your fingers. Coiling softens the tube and facilitates the insertion through the client's nares. Use the tube to measure from the tip of the client's nose to the earlobe. Then from the earlobe to the xiphoid process, plus six inches. Mark the distance with tape. This length should be sufficient to advance the tube into the client's stomach. Lubricate the first three to four inches of the tube with a water-soluble lubricant. This facilitates advancement through the nasal passage. With the client's head upright or slightly extended, carefully insert the tube into the client's nostril and aim it toward the client's ear and downward. and gently advance it towards the client's nasopharynx. Turning and directing the tube helps it conform to the anatomic passageways. When the tube reaches the nasopharynx, pharynx, resistance will be felt. Have the client open their mouth and check with the pen light to visualize the tube. This helps to visualize that the tube is at the back of the throat and not coiled up inside the mouth. Ask the client to take a sip of water several times while advancing the tube until the tape mark is reached. If the client gags, briefly stop the tube advancement. The swallowing helps to open the upper esophageal sphincter and allow the tube to enter the esophagus. Once the tube is advanced toward the back of the throat, have the client flex the head forward, then rotate the tube 180 degrees inward toward the client's other nostril. This helps direct the tube past the nasopharynx. Ask the client to sip water several times while advancing the tube until the tape mark is reached.
if the client gags, briefly stop the tube advancement. This swallowing opens the upper esophageal sphincter and allows the tube to enter the esophagus. Aspirate 20 to 30 cc's of air into the syringe. Attach the syringe to the free end of the nasogastric tube to check for tube position. Tube must be placed in the client's alimentary canal, not the respiratory tract. Place a stethoscope over the client's epigastric region. Then inject the air, listening for the swooshing sound. This indicates that the tube has probably reached the stomach. Keeping the syringe attached, pull back on the plunger to aspirate gastric contents. Check for color and pH of the contents. Since secretions may be obtained from the tube inadvertently placed in the client's airway or pleural space, pH testing of aspirated secretions helps determine where the tube has been placed. Make a pair of pants of tape by using two to three inches piece of tape and splitting it halfway up the middle. Place the body of the pants tape on the client's nose. Loop the piece of tape around the tube. to stabilize the tube or use an attachment device. This reduces tissue trauma due to tube movement and helps prevent tube displacement. Loop a piece of tape around the tube to attach it to the patient's gown. Check your hospital policy to make sure they allow you to use safety pins. If the tube is pulled, tension will be placed at the pin site rather than the client's nair. Securing the tube above the stomach helps prevent leakage due to siphoning. Plug the end of the tube or connect it to intermittent continuous suction device for decompression. My name is Jackie Rusick and I'm going to demonstrate for you an intermittent large bore nasogastric tube feeding. Tube feedings provide a direct delivery method of nutrients into the GI system bypassing the mouth. To complete this exercise you will need the following. Alcohol swabs to wipe off the containers, prescribed nutritional formula or products, a calibrated container for measuring the formula, an irrigating syringe, 50 cc's with a catheter tip for the bolus NG feeding, another calibrated container, this one containing water for flushing, clean gloves, and in order to check proper placement of your NG tube, a stethoscope and a gastrocult slide, which is to test the pH of the gastric contents. Wash your hands before performing any of these steps. First, you'll want to swab the unopened formula container top with alcohol. Second, you'll want to date and refrigerate any opened formula that will be remaining after the procedure. Third, you'll want to have warm formula, which is at room temperature, 
And in order to do this, you may have to place the container with formula in it in a basin of hot water to get it to room temperature. Four, elevate the head of the bed to a 30 degree angle or higher. And five, assess that the NG or gastrostomy tube has not migrated. After you've done the preparatory steps, to start, you're going to want to assess the client's abdomen and verify the presence of bowel sounds. Absence of bowel sounds indicates lack of peristalsis and gastric feeding should not be given in this case. Next you're going to want to determine the position of the NG tube using sounds with stethoscope and aspiration of gastric contents. Aspirate the gastric contents to determine residual volume. If residual volume is greater than one half of the volume previously delivered, hold the feeding and recheck again in one hour. Return aspirated contents to stomach. The reason for this is because these secretions contain electrolytes. Their return to the stomach helps prevent electrolyte imbalance. Next, remove the plunger from the syringe and attach empty syringe barrel to the NG tube. Holding the syringe no higher than 18 inches above the client's stomach, administer 30 cc's of water to flush and test the tubing. Clamp the tubing by folding before the syringe empties. The reason we do this is that it prevents administering air into the client's stomach. Pour the feeding product into the syringe barrel and allow to flow slowly by gravity over 15 minutes. The reason we do this over 15 minutes by gravity is because forced delivery increases risk of cramping, nausea, or vomiting. Clamp the tubing before the syringe empties or continuously fill syringe before it completely empties. Again, the reason for this is because if the syringe empties and the tubing fills with air, additional formula will move this air into the client's stomach and increases the risk of vomiting. Flush the tubing with 30 cc's of water and clamp the tubing. This completes this procedure.